Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where you thought I didn't dress nicely. I'm actually wearing a suit today because one, I'm an attorney, two, I'm also running for the NRA Board of Directors, and three, John and I were out taking pictures for my website, adamkraut.com. As you probably guessed, I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about getting airborne with firearms. The Transformer rail from Manicore Arms offers unparalleled versatility for both the AR-15 and now AK platform rifles. This free-floating rail system allows you to attach both M-Lock and Key Mod segments, Picatinny rail segments, as well as a host of other options. You can bet that almost any attachment will work. Available in OD Green, Flat Dark Earth, and of course Black, this lightweight setup might be just what you need. To get 10% off anything you buy, use the code TGC10 at ManicoreArms.com. A lot of people have asked what is the proper way to fly with a firearm. Flying with a firearm is not any more difficult than flying generally. It just requires you be aware of the regulations surrounding flying with a gun. Let me start by saying that each airline has its own set of policies and procedures, and this video is only meant to address the federal regulations. We'll begin with the transportation of a firearm before moving on to the ammunition itself. And for the love of God, check your carry-on before you line up to be gripped by TSA. Taking a dump today, ma'am. Uh, no, just need to be. Opt out. <laughs> 49 CFR section 1540.111 regulates the carriage of weapons, explosives, and incendiaries by individuals with regards to civil aviation. It states that an individual may not transport, offer for transport in a checked bag, or in baggage carried in an inaccessible cargo hold, a loaded firearm, or an unloaded firearm unless four criteria are met. So if you want to transport a gun on a plane, these four criteria must be met. First, the passenger must declare to the aircraft operator, read the ticket agent, either verbally or in writing before checking their baggage, that the passenger has a firearm and that it is unloaded. Second, the firearm actually has to be unloaded. Third, the firearm must be in a hard side container. And fourth, the container in which the firearm is carried must be locked and only the passenger retains the key or combination to the lock. As a side note, you cannot carry any of the firearm parts, save for a scope and a carry-on. It must all be checked. Now the fourth point is probably the most important. You and you alone are to have the ability to open the container that has the firearm in it. There have been reported instances of TSA agents demanding a passenger relinquish their key so that they can open the container. I can't for the life of me figure out a reason which would require them to be able to open the container as they can see through it with an x-ray machine and there's no reason for them to open the thing. With regard to ammunition, section 1540.111 states, this section does not prohibit the carriage of ammunition in checked baggage or in the same container as a firearm. However, 49 CFR section 175.10 regulates small arms ammunition. It states that ammunition for personal use may be carried by a passenger in checked baggage if securely packaged in boxes or other packaging specifically designed to carry small amounts of ammunition. Ammunition clips and magazines must also be securely boxed. In other words, you can't have ammunition in an ammo can or just thrown into a box. Factory packaging or those MTM boxes that some of us reloaders use will suffice. John actually ran into an issue one time when he was trying to fly with ammunition because the amount of ammunition he brought with him was greater than the weight limit set by the airline he was flying. Some airlines may have a specific weight limit for the amount of ammunition you are carrying, so be sure to check their website or call before flying. Here's a few tips for flying with a firearm. Arrive early so that you don't encounter any unexpected delays with TSA. Shoes off, belts off, sharp objects go in the plastic tray. This is inhumane. Shut up, sir. When I was coming back from Boise, TSA wanted to swab my luggage after I declared there was a firearm in it. I'm not really sure what they were expecting to find, perhaps some gunpowder residue, but that makes sense because there was a f gun in it. If traveling with a pistol, I lock the hard side container to the frame of the suitcase. My thought is it's a bit harder to walk out of the airport with a suitcase than it is a hard side container tucked into a backpack. Lastly, check the website of the airline you're flying to see if they have any special restrictions. Would you please remove any metallic items you're carrying, keys, loose change? So flying with a gun really isn't that bad. Much like other gun laws, individuals have made it sound more complicated than it really is. Hopefully you're now a little more comfortable with the idea of flying with a firearm. If you guys like this episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button and share it around with your friends. Do you have a question you want answered on the show? Head on over to the Legal Brief section on theguncollective.com. Be sure to check out my website, adamkraut.com, 
For more information on my quest to serve you on the NRA Board of Directors, and don't forget to like The Gun Collective on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Full30, Snapchat, and wherever else you can catch us on social media. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.